So we're off to another video, and the video is going to talk about, guess what, nomenclature of amines. That's right. If, if you paid attention to the last video toward the end, I told you this is what it was going to be. And look, I didn't lie to you, did I? So this problem says give the systematic name, a.k.a. IUPAC, and common name, if it has one, for each of the following amines. And then indicate whether it's a primary, secondary, or tertiary amine. All right, so we're going to go through and we're going to IUPAC these suckers first. We know they all have IUPAC, so that's a pretty good place to start. All right, so for A, up here at the top, my longest carbon chain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so I know that this is a hexane. I drop the E, I add on the word amine, and this NH2 group is attached to the first carbon of that chain. So 1 Hexanamine is going to be the name of that structure. See how easy that IUPAC was? All right, so for B, I do the same thing. Now, here the nitrogen's kind of sandwiched in the middle, and I need to take a look at the longest carbon chain in order to do that. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five. It's five either way. On this side, the right hand side, it's one, two, three. So this is definitely by far the longest carbon chain that I have. It's right there. Okay. So with this four or five carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five, this is going to be a pentane. So let me write that out. Drop the E and add on the word amine. So pentanamine. Well, this happens at carbon number one. I'm naming it as an amine, so I try to number closest to that end, and it just so happens that that nitrogen's right there. So there's carbon one. This is carbon two. That's carbon three. This is carbon four. That's carbon five. Now, I need to name what's rest on the nitrogen, okay? So this is going to be a problem for me. I can go back and kind of use the parentheses and call it a propane. And then at one position, I have a methyl and I can call it a one methyl propyl if that's what I want to do. That's fine. But if I'm clever, I can have a very shorthanded way to name that structure. That is a four carbon chain and it's on a secondary carbon. And there's only one type of secondary carbon on a four carbon chain. It's either this one or that one. And whichever one it's connected to, it's the same structure, folks. There's no difference between them. So this is actually a sec butyl. So I can put in sec butyl pentanamine. That's perfectly fine because I'm letting you know that that sec butyl group is attached to the end of the nitrogen. And then on carbon number four, I'm going to see a methyl group. So 4-methyl in sec butyl pentanamine is going to be the IUPAC for that uh, compound. Now, if you mess up the 4-methyl and the in sec butyl and you flip these around and you put them in an opposite order, it's no big deal, folks. I still give you credit. All the major pieces and parts are there. You just didn't put them in the order that's preferred, and that's not a problem for me at all. So whatever, I don't care. All right? So if you look at C, we have to IUPAC this as well. Uh, the longest carbon chain, this is kind of funny, though. Look at this, CH3, CH22. And then it's on a nitrogen with a CH3 group. Okay, so what does that really mean? Well, that means there's two of those groups. Okay, so if you wanted to rewrite this different way and put CH2, CH3 up here and get rid of that extra one, that's what that means. It means that this nitrogen has two ethyl groups, and they just wrote it together to make it more condensed. But this is really what it's referring to. That nitrogen has two ethyl groups. There you go. And then a methyl group as well. All right, so the longest carbon chain, it, I could circle the one to the left or the one on top. It doesn't matter. So it's a two-carbon chain. So therefore, this is a ethane. Drop the E, add the word amine. So ethanamine is what this is. And then on the nitrogen, I have an ethyl group. E comes before. And then on the nitrogen, I also have a methyl group. So E comes before N. So N ethyl, N methyl, ethanamine. That is the IUPAC name for that structure. 
All right, for D, I do the same thing. Longest carbon chain here looks like to me one, two, three, four. So here's a four carbon chain. There you go. So this is going to be called a butane. Drop the E, add the word amine, butanamine. And then here to the left on the nitrogen, I have a propyl group. So this is N propyl butanamine. For E, I keep going, I keep trucking, I'm on a roll, right? My longest carbon chain here is a three carbon chain. So this is going to be called a propane, drop the E, add amine, propanamine. And on the N and on the N, I have two of the same group. It's a ethyl group. So NN diethyl propanamine. And then for F, again, the longest carbon chain here. The longest carbon chain is this five-membered ring that's right there that's directly connected to, the, uh, connected to the nitrogen. On this side, there's just two carbons, and that's it. So the ring is my longest continuous carbon chain. So this is a cyclopentane. Drop the E, add the word amine. Cyclopentanamine or pentamine. All right, so on this nitrogen, I also have an ethyl group. So I need to put N ethyl there, right? N ethyl cyclopentanamine. Okay, so this nitrogen is going to be on carbon number one of the longest chain. I've now taken care of this ethyl group, N ethyl in front. So carbon number two is here and carbon number three is there. So on carbon three, I have a methyl group. So three methyl. N ethyl cyclopentanamine or pentanamine. It's up to you on how you want to say it. All right, so there we go. Now, I've not really fully answered a question. I've only answered part of the question. I know you're saying, oh my God, what, what else is there? Uh, the next part is uh, indicate whether it's primary, secondary, tertiary. All right, so it doesn't really matter how I name it. It's going to be the same type of system no matter what. So if I look at this nitrogen, it's only attached to one other carbon. This is a primary amine. If I look at B, this nitrogen has a carbon to the left and a carbon to the right. So therefore, this is a secondary amine. If I look at C, this nitrogen has one to the left and one up above and one to the right. Because remember, there was a two there. That's what that means. So there's three groups attached to that one. For D, there's one to the left and one to the right, so there's two groups attached to that one, secondary. For E, I've got one below and one to the left and one to the right, so this is a tertiary amine. And then for F, this nitrogen, I've got one to the left and one to the right, so this is a secondary amine. So that takes care of that. That was pretty quick and easy and painless. And now finally, we need to go through and we need to take a look at common names. But this one was the tricky one because it says if it has one, if it has one, then they want us to write down the common name. So if these are typically simple groups and if these simple groups can be named um, without a problem, then it probably does have a common name. And for A, of course, that's going to have a common name. So the way that we common name them, just to go back and dig out that information, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So we are going to name this as a hexol, not a hexane. That's the difference, right? So we're going to name this as a hexol, and then we add the word amine on the end, just like usual. So hexyl amine is the common name for that structure. All right, if we look at number two, uh, this number two has a nitrogen right here. And to the left of this is a group. Can we common name that? And the answer is yes, we can. This common name is an ISO unit. I see that L structure that's there at the end. And one, two, three, four, five, six in total. So this is a ISO hexyl. And then over on this side, we see also an L shape, but it doesn't really happen toward the end, right? This is next to that one. So this is a four carbon chain. We already called it a sec butyl group. It's going to be called a sec butyl group yet again. All right, so what that basically means is that I need to write those two together in alphabetical order. And to the left, 
I have the ISO hexyl, and then to the right, I have the sec butyl. Notice that the sec does not take place in alphabetizing. If you get it backward, I'm not going to count it wrong, but to be prim and proper, B comes first. So this is a sec butyl iso hexyl and then the word amine. All right, so there we go. Sec butyl iso hexyl amine and that is an I but it's kind of covered up with my M and my N together. All right, for C, we also have a common name for this one. This is not a problem. To the left, we have an ethyl and up above we have an ethyl and to the right we have a methyl. So I could simply call this a diethyl methyl amine. And there we go. There's the common name for that structure. For D, this also has a common name. This is not a problem either. They're very straight, simple little pieces that get attached to the nitrogen. So to the left, I have a propyl, and to the right, I have a butyl. So keeping it in alphabetical order, this is a butyl propyl amine. For part E, again, very simple, clean pieces. This has a common name without a problem. To the left, that is a propyl. To the right, that is an ethyl. And down below, that is an ethyl. So just like before, E comes before P. So di, ethyl, and then propyl, and then the word amine. And then for F, well, to the left, this is an ethyl group, and to the, or to the right, it's an ethyl group. To the left, there's no really common name that represents that entire group over on the left-hand side. So because of that, this one is going to be an easy one for common names because there isn't one. So again, those common names really only refer to very simple, clean pieces that are attached, in this case, to the nitrogen. And those pieces have a common name that they go by. Anything that's complicated, anything that has with it extra pieces, it's just not going to work, folks. And to give you a, a difference here, just the simple removal of that extra methyl that's pointed off on that ring would have made the difference here. All right, so if the structure was this instead of the one up above, then we could call this cyclopentyl right there. All right, the problem here, though, is that it had this extra methyl group, and that complicated that structure. So if we had what was down below, that would have a common name. This is a cyclopentyl, and then this is a ethyl. So C comes before E, right? So we could call this a cyclopentyl ethyl amine and that is an acceptable common name for that but the problem is that this cyclopentyl was not just a cyclopentyl it also had this piece that was hanging off and now I need to come up with a name that represents that entire thing and I can't do that so that's where we have to rely on IUPAC in order to do it if that substituent or that hangout was not there off to the left hand side then we would have been perfectly fine and we would have had a common name for this but that wasn't the structure that they gave us. So there is no common name because that, that group to the left was a little bit more complicated than what we would like to see. All right. Uh, here's another example. Draw condensed and skeletal structures for each of the following amines. So this is an example where we go from the name to the structure. And I told you that we did very few of these, right? So we might as well start doing some of them, get used to them. 2-methyl n-propyl 1-propanamine. All right, so propanamine, that is a CH3, CH2, CH3. There is my propane. Now, on group number one, I have the amine structure. All right, so what I'm going to do is on my first carbon, I'm going to erase a hydrogen, and then I'm going to draw the nitrogen. So there is my amine structure. What type of amine do I have? I don't know yet. Is this just a simple NH2 or is it something else? We don't know. We've got to look at the name to figure that out. So it says N-propyl. All right, so N means on the nitrogen, we have a propyl group. All right, so on this nitrogen, I have a CH2, a CH2, and a CH3 group that's there. And then on the second carbon of the main chain, I have a methyl group. 
All right, so here's the first carbon of the main chain. There's the second carbon of the main chain, and there is a methyl group that's going to be located at that position. All right, so there's two methyl and N propyl, one propanamine. That is how we do that structure. Now, it also wanted the skeletal structures of it, right? Okay, so the skeletal structures, I can convert this over, and what I can see is a three carbon chain, one two, three, and then on the second carbon, I've got one that's pointed up. There is the carbon there. And then on this first carbon, I have something pointed down. That's my nitrogen. And then I have three carbons off of that. So I can do one, two, three. It's not the prettiest way to draw this structure. So if you look up this structure on Google or something like that, you're going to find it represented in a different way. And what they do is here's my propyl group. That propyl group is attached to my nitrogen that has a hydrogen on it, by the way. I've left that off, but it's understood to have three bonds, so hydrogen is one of them. And then from here, I get a carbon, a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. So this is what you would represent on an internet. Google, database, Wikipedia, something, some kind of search engine. This is what you would see for that structure. However, logically, you would not draw the structure that way. So if you have a habit of Googling structures, please note that there's going to be times like this where I know that you have Googled it because you have drawn it in a way that doesn't quite make sense in the very beginning. Most people would end up with something like this if they followed the name in the very beginning learning organic. This is what they would provide me. And I'm okay with this. This structure I'm okay with because it's correct. Only when you start getting used to organic, much, much later down the road, do you really convert those structures over to this that's a little bit prettier. So just a hint, 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 if you begin to Google things, I'll know about it. So don't Google them. Really put the effort in in learning what these names are supposed to represent because I'll know it every single time. All right, for B, N-ethyl ethanamine. All right, so ethanamine, that is a two-carbon chain, CH3, CH3. There we go. There's two carbons. Well, there's no number here, so that means that on this first carbon, I'm going to erase it, and I'll put a 2, and we have a nitrogen that's going to be located there. I just drew it to the left. You could have drawn it up. You could have drawn it down. I don't care what you do, but just put the nitrogen on the first carbon in some form or fashion. And then after that, it says in ethyl. So that means on that nitrogen that I just wrote down, I'm going to have to put an ethyl group. So that means CH2 and a CH3. So here is the structure for N-ethyl ethanamine. Now if I want it skeletal structure-wise, there's my first carbon, there's my second carbon. That gets connected to a nitrogen. And then off of that one, I get another carbon and then maybe another carbon. So there is my N-ethyl ethanamine. Please note as well, this nitrogen does have a hydrogen on it because that was what will give it three bonds. So if I wanted to include that here, I could. So NH is going to be written there. A lot of times if I don't do it, I just assume that you know that it's there. And other people will do that as well. They only write down what is actually needed for this process. Okay, so for C, 5-methyl-1-hexanamine. All right, so hexanamine is six carbons. One, two, three four, five, six. Look at what I did here. I left off those hydrogens. I just wrote the carbons, right? Make it simpler. All right, so on carbon one, I have the amine group. So there is the first nitrogen. And then on carbon five, I have a methyl group. All right, so carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five. Carbon five, I have a methyl group that's right here. Okay, so there is the structure for that name, 5-methyl-1-hexanamine. This nitrogen, though, if I really wanted to be proper, this only has one bond, so it really does need two more hydrogens in order for that to work, so NH2 is there. This carbon, two bonds, so it needs two hydrogens. This carbon, two bonds, it needs two hydrogens. This one, two bonds, it needs two hydrogen. That one, two bonds, it needs two hydrogen. This one, it has three bonds, so this needs one hydrogen. One up on top has one bond, so it needs three. And the one to the right, it has one bond, so it needs three. So if you wanted to be a complete structure, there you go. And then if you wanted it to be a skeletal structure, 
we still write NH2. And then off of this NH2, I have one carbon. There's my second carbon. There's my third carbon. There's my fourth carbon. There's my fifth carbon. There's my sixth carbon. And because this is kind of pointed and kinked down, I'm just going to draw that extra methyl group down below. You could have done it up. I wouldn't have cared. I mean, it's the same thing. You still have the same group in the same position. But to make it pretty on a sheet of paper, I point it down. And that's what you'll often see in the textbooks and stuff as well. All right, so for E, we've got N-N-dimethyl-3-pentanamine. All right, so pentan, one, two, three, four, five. And then on carbon three, which is right here, I have the amine group. So this is where my nitrogen is going to be. Well, NN basically means there's two groups on that nitrogen. What are they? Well, each one of them is a methyl group. So I have a methyl here and I have a methyl there. If I wanted to go through and write in all of the hydrogens, I could. This one needs three of them. This one needs two of them. This one needs one. This one needs two. This one needs three, this one needs three, and this one needs three. If I wanted to draw the skeletal structure of this, I'll start off with my nitrogen here, and then I have a methyl group to the left. I have a methyl group to the right. Up here, it's connected to a carbon. And then to the left and right of that carbon are two more, right? So one, two, and then one, two. And there's the hieroglyphic for NN dimethyl 3 pentanamine. All right, so finally, the last one. The last one is cyclohexyl ethyl methyl amine. All right, so let me come up here and do it up here. So cyclohexyl ethyl methyl amine. That is a common name. That's not an IUPAC name. And the reason I know that is because I see YLs, right? So cyclohexyl, ethyl, methyl. There was no full-blown name like propanamine, hexanamine, right? None of that was there. It was all ending in YLs. So what they're letting me know is that that nitrogen has attached to it a methyl group, and a methyl group is a CH3. It also has an ethyl group, so this is a CH2 and a CH3. And it also has a cyclohexyl group. So on the other side of this, I need a cyclo with a six carbon ring, and there we go. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So there is the structure of cyclohexyl ethyl methylamine. If I wanted to condense this down to skeletal, I could. This is part skeletal anyway right here. If I wanted to write the carbons and all the hydrogens into the ring, I could. But if I do really want a true blue skeletal structure, then I would draw the nitrogen and I would do this ring shape on this side. Down here below, I need to represent two carbons, and then here I need to represent one carbon. So there is the skeletal representation of that structure. All right. So again, just example problems of how to go from a name to a structure, because most of the time we've been going the other way. Okay. So with that said, we're not quite yet done with amines and the nomenclature. I want to give you some more examples before we go on and move to the next topic. And in the next video, we'll continue to do these examples. We'll look at structures again. We'll try to come up with names of them just to give you a little bit more practice on this field of this game that we're calling nomenclature. All right. So come back. See me. I'll be here. I'll be waiting.